Intermediate Accounting 32 Installment Sales and Gross Profit. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here is our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and our LinkedIn group, MBA Accounting and Finance. I've got a question from a client that takes installment sales for two years, and the question is twofold. First of all, we have to account for sales in two periods. Secondly, we have cash from those sales, cash receipts coming in over time. So for example, in 2012, some of the payments come in in 2012, but some a year later. And under an installment sale method, we basically match the profit from the sale with the the cash that comes in the door. So one reason we might do that is is because the person that we sold the good to, there's some risk to them not paying. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why we might consider an installment sale method. Another reason we call it defer gross profit on this video is that some of the profit, the gross profit that we'll see in a minute is deferred from the year of sale into a later year because we don't collect the cash till a later year. So let's talk about the example. We have installment sales in these dollar amounts. We have these costs and if we subtract the two we get gross profit. So in 2012 installment sales less cost equals gross profit. And then there's a line I that was in here on the student sheet called rate of gross profit on sales which more accurately should read gross profit as a percentage of sales. So in 2012 the gross profits about 400,000 over a million 179 which means for every dollar sold we earn about 34 cents. For every dollar sold we earn about 34 cents. So in 2012 we collect on our 2012 on 2012 sales about 485,000 of the entire sales amount. And so down here in this box I had it says realized gross profit recognized which is going to be the sales we collect times the percentage gross profit on those sales sales times the gross profit is the amount of gross profit we recognize in the year so if on our 2012 sales we recognize this much and our total gross profit is the 400,860. The difference between these two numbers is the deferred gross profit that's going to be recognized in 2013 and later depending on how fast we collect the remaining cash we're owed. So I have a line that I should mention. The total gross profit in blue and the gross profit that will be recognized in 2012 and 2013 which we have on the screen and then we have gross profit that gets recognized even farther out even in years farther out than 2013 and we'll see that as the problem develops so in 2012 we collect this much cash we multiply it times this gross profit rate and we come up with that amount of gross profit recognized in 2012 2013 things get a little more complicated. We have this much in sales, we have this much in cost. A minus B is our 419 roughly in gross profit from 2013 sales. So for every dollar we sell we collect 32 cents. However, when we look at it in terms of cash receipts, we get cash receipts from 2012 sales and cash receipts from 2013. So in terms of profit in 2013, we take 2012 cash receipts times 34%. We get the gross profit recognized for 2012. We take 2013 cash collections times 32%, which is the 2013 percentage. So 584 times 32% is the 187, 184 number. So what I have down here says our total gross profit for 2013 is 419200.
let's talk about some things over here at the right hand side in terms of 2012 sales the total is 400,860 gross profit our total sales are a million one seventy nine but over these two years for 2012 sales we only collect 943 200 we still have some cash to collect on these sales we still have cash to collect on these sales so because we don't collect all the cash by the end of 2013 we have some gross profit deferred same thing with 2013 we collect some of the 2013 cash we have quite a bit left to collect so we have gross profit that's deferred we can finish up by looking at the one set at least of the journal entries and so one thing I set up for the student over here was if we have sales on the left credit cost of sales on the right and expense debit the difference between those two numbers is gross profit so in 2012 we have cost of sales credit cash we have sales credit revenue and a receivable and then we have deferred gross profit and if we took cost of sales plus deferred gross profit debit that would equal sales credit when we collect cash we debit cash to increase it we reduce the receivable that we set up up here to recognize cash collections on installment sales and then finally we have the gross profit recognized on 2012 sales in that year 2012 we have deferred gross profit on cash collections we have the same sort of journal entry for 2013 and again because I think this T account is important we have to think about sales credit cost of sales debit the difference being gross profit and that's going to be similar to the flow that we see in the journal entries so to sum up we calculate gross profit we calculate that number as a percentage of sales we multiply these percentages times the cash we collect and based on gross profit percentages times cash collect we figure out gross profit recognized and the key being we only recognize profit as we collect cash. That's the end of Intermediate Accounting 32. We now have video textbooks, 30 minute to one hour videos reported in group by accounting topics. So we have cost management, cash flow, and other topics. They're on the website stltest.net. You can also get the spreadsheet templates we use to create the YouTube videos for one-on-one -on -one live tutoring online Ken at STL test is the email. Here's our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.